Hi, my name is Emma Ketirai, and I'm a certified Dubsado specialist based in Canada. In this video, I'm going to take you through how to customize the Dubsado proposal template that you received in your email. So let's get started. The first thing is you need to be logged into the Dubsado account that you want the template to go into. So in this case, I have a trial account and I want to import that proposal template into this specific account. Once I'm logged in, I can you can click on that button in the email and it will import directly into this account. So I'm just going to put the URL of that template up above and this is what you're going to see. So you're simply going to click copy to account and now you can make edits to it. To edit the text inside of this template, you're simply going to click on the portion that you want to change and you can see that the headers are all Oswald and you can change that to whatever you want. Let's say you wanted to use Playfair display, you just make it a little bit smaller to fit inside and that would work. And then if you wanted to change it from railway, which is what I use for all the paragraph text, you're simply going to choose whichever one works best. Let's say it's this one. You're gonna click save. And then you can click save form just to make sure that everything is saving as you go along. Um, one thing to remember here is to continuously preview your form because it's going to look different when you're editing versus previewing. So I'll show you. So you see how much wider it becomes. And so when you're making changes, adding pictures, text, whatever you're doing, just make sure you preview so that it looks, um, so you have an idea of what it looks like on a computer screen at least. So to change uh, images, all you're going to do is click on this and you're going to add files. So I have a lot of other files in here that I've used as examples, but um, one place, like if you need stock photography and you don't know where to get it, two sites that you can use that provide stock photos for free. One is Unsplash and the other is Pexels. Okay, so in, in these, you're simply going to search for whatever works for you. So let's say you can see some of the things that I've searched for. So minimalist decor, you just scroll it. Let's say you wanted to use that one, you're just going to download it. Um, let's say, and, and you can filter these as well. So you can, in Pexels, you can filter by color. You can also do orientation. So let's say you wanted square images. You're simply going to find a lot of them here. So let's say you wanted to use this one. You're just going to download it. Um, the only thing is that this file is, it's not too large. It's 292K. But if you had a, uh, an image that was much larger, I would highly recommend compressing those images before you upload them into Dubsado. To compress your images, you can use a site like tinyjpeg.com. You simply drag that image into this box here and you're going to see that it's going to compress it for you let's see how much it ends up being so 88k so that's a lot better than the 300 that we started with so you're just going to download it and you're just going to use that version it's going to save with the exact same name um, so just uh, be careful which one you upload going back to the form if i wanted to use that image i'm just simply going to drop it here And now I can add it there. So you can see that maybe the sizing isn't right. I'm going to move myself out of this. And that's where the scale comes into play. So let's say if I said 80, that looks a little bit better. Just always make sure you preview. to see how much larger it looks in the preview form. So let's say, okay, I wanted to make it a little bit smaller. Let's say 70. Save. And preview. Let's say that's okay for you. Um, if you wanted to change the color of the background, you're just going to click on this container and you're going to see that I have a very light beige color here. Um, if you have the hex code, go ahead and punch that in. You can also move this around, whatever works for you. Um, so that's how you would change the background of each of these containers. So if you scroll, you can see I have a slightly darker beige in this one. Um, so you would go about doing the exact same thing for all of these different uh, sections. So this container has an image in the background. So it has a color. So you can see this like dark brown, black kind of color. 
and it has an image as well. So you can see it has a background opacity of 24%. If you scroll all the way to 100, you're just going to see the photo. If you scroll all the way to zero, you're only going to see the color. So that's why I kind of left it somewhere in between where the color of the photo kind of starts to turn into that background color. So it matches the rest of the form. When you get to the packages area of your form, here you're going to edit and add your own packages. So if I click on this text here, I added this manually. But if you wanted to save time, let's say you update the name of your package inside the packages area of um, the templates in Dubsado, you would simply put package name, okay? And that you can see it's using this sample package because that's what I selected here. So if I change this and I say six month coaching package, you can see that it updates automatically. So that's something that you can do to save time. There are a lot of other package smart fields here that you can pull from. You can also put the names and amounts and descriptions and things like that um, with these smart fields. Um, sometimes it looks a little bit, it doesn't look as pretty as if you type it out, but it also does save you time. Like if you make updates inside the packages area, then you don't have to make those updates inside of your proposal. Um, so it's completely up to you. So I have the select button here, but if you wanted to use check boxes, um, which work really well actually for add-ons um, or quantities, let's say if you're doing things by the hour and you wanted to do quantity, you could do that as well. So instead of selecting, here, let's scroll down. Let's say one of these add-ons. Um, let me delete this button. Quantity. So they would basically just add as many hours as they would like. So let's say like this. And again, you can go up here and add the package name. So now it updates like this. Okay. So if they add that at the bottom of the proposal, it would start to uh, multiply the number by the number of hours by the price of the package, which is in hours. So that's one way uh, to do that if you have packages or services that you offer at an hourly rate. For these sections over here where the packages are, you'll see a color in the background, which is this one. And then you'll see that I put a container inside of a container and that's so that I could add a different background. So um, if you have two colors in your palette, you can use them together this way. This one's white, so you can change this one or change this one. Um, but the reason I put a container inside a container is to have a little bit more control over um, the background colors, really. Uh, same over here. So this one's white and this is that beige color. So for this section over here, um, this container isn't full width. So you could make it full width if you wanted to. I kind of wanted it to look a little bit different from the packages. So I did this one like less wide just so this one stands out a bit more and these are the add-ons. Another thing to point out is that if any of these sections don't apply to you or you just don't want to use it, you want to use a simpler version of this proposal, just go ahead and delete those sections. Like if you don't have add-ons, don't feel compelled to have to create add-ons to send out a proposal. Just delete this and delete the section down here and it'll be gone. Same with here. Like if you don't you know, getting into the details of the steps uh, that people follow to work with you. If that's something you just don't want to get into in a proposal, just go ahead and delete the section. Another thing that you can do is duplicate the section. So let's say you have four testimonials. What you could do is duplicate this one and drag it down here. If you don't want images, you can delete that one and just move, for instance, this over to here. And then you have two testimonials. Same with this. Like if you have four questions that people usually ask you, you can just go here and put four. I wouldn't recommend putting more than five because it is going to get long. Um, so one of the things with proposals is you don't want it to be a little too overwhelming for the person receiving it. You want it to be just easy to navigate for them to select and understand what your packages are. Um, and how to sign up and work with you. Um, if any of these feel like too much, just like I said, go ahead and delete them. For the next steps, this portion is important. 
so they understand exactly what's going to happen. They're going to submit the proposal next. If you're attaching a contract to this, they would sign the contract. And if you're also attaching an invoice, they would pay the first installment or however you have that structured. So make it clear to them what's going to happen so they don't feel um, hesitant to submit the proposal and move on. And another thing that I'm going to say is if this very top section, um, because it is two, there's two containers here, there's two columns, um, it's going to look maybe not so clean on mobile. So if you wanted to, you could also do this and duplicate this container and move it all the way to the top and use this as your welcome section. Okay, so you could just move this over here and structure it so that it's centered. Delete this and then delete this. Okay, you could do that as well. And you can also use smart fields. So let's say you have a client's full name or I usually do their first name, but let's say client, yeah, first name, there we go. I wouldn't do that in capitals then, welcome. And when they preview this, they're gonna see their name as they submitted it in the form or lead capture, whatever you have inside of your um, system. If this is not a personalized, like if, if it's a public proposal and everyone's gonna see it, then I would remove, like you don't need smart fields, it's not gonna work. So uh, just something to know. So if you did want your form to be three in one, meaning that the proposal goes to the contract, goes to the invoice, you're going to toggle this on and you're going to select, like you're gonna select the contract like that. If you wanted people to be able to select multiple packages, you're also gonna to toggle that on. If you wanted to include an invoice, uh, payment plan, um, it just depends. Like if you're gonna use a workflow, do not add the payment plan here, add the payment plan through the workflow or they're going to cancel each other out. Um, if you wanted to allow discounts, you just have to set those up inside of the packages area and then that would work here. It wouldn't give me that error. So the public proposal option basically allows you to sell, uh, anyone who has the link can submit it and sign up for your packages, your services, okay? So this is great, it's almost like a sales page. So if you don't need to talk to people before they sign up, if it's something that you're selling directly on your website, you could use the public proposal and then from your website, you know, they submit a link or through an email that you're sending out to your list, you send them directly to a, a to this link to this public proposal. Anyone who submits this proposal will it will create a new project for them inside of Dubsado. Um, and one final thing: make sure you delete this bottom section. Just make sure you delete it as you're making changes to the template. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Hopefully, this is helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can email me, you can DM me on Instagram. I would love to see what you're doing with this template. Um, just, yeah, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you later.